You're listening to XS Gaming Podcast, a podcast for gamers by gamers, with your hosts Xander Scullion and James Gruesome, bringing you something old, something new, and a little bit of nostalgia too. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, whichever time you guys are checking us out. This is another episode of XS Gaming Podcast. We're recording this on the 21st of August. This is episode 91. I said episode. Nerndurun. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm one of your hosts, Xander Scullion, and join with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Mr. James Gruesome. What's up, James? Greetings, everyone. I know Halloween is not here yet, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them, but I'd really be kind of okay with like not seeing Harley Quinn, I think, ever again. <laughs> Uh, maybe the jester outfit, but the one with like the purple and blue hair and that, I just, I don't know. I, I'm tired oh, it's, of it's it. Gonna, it's going to be everywhere. That's the thing, dude. If you go to a convention, like they're everywhere. Like, That's what I hear. Deadpools I heard, and Harley Quinns. And I heard Poison Ivy is a, is a big one too. Yeah. Yeah. She's been getting a little, a po- little bit of popularity, but yeah, Harley Quinn. I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, any, any female that does cosplay, like that's, they get a book or something that's like cosplay one on one. They're like chapter one, Harley Quinn. You Spin. know, <laughs> I guess this is kind of easy. You know, it's yeah, like just put some stars on your face and uh, a shirt <laughs> with monster <laughs> pudding on it, and I guess you're good. But yeah, yeah, I mean, we got some uh, we got some interesting stuff to talk about. Um, uh, first thing I guess we'll open up with is uh, Crystal Pepsi. Well, let's talk a little Crystal bit about. Pepsi. Let's talk about it's Crystal. back. It is. And it what you know what it wasn't as hard to come by as Ecto Cooler was. I remember you know a couple episodes ago, and I was like, oh, you know, Crystal Pepsi is back in Canada. It's going to be back in America soon, and I'm not even going to be worried about getting it because I knew everyone would be like buying you know 16 cases and try to flip them online. They're very very easy to come by. I went to a gas station and bought a couple. That they were right there. I, I happen to go into the grocery store right down the street. I'll just go in there to get lunch. Some days, like a sandwich from the deli. It was just like a food line. And I, I see the, the Pepsi guy, and he's pushing his cart. And I saw some on there, and I was like, oh, man. I was like, I'm going to try one because we talked about this like a you know, few episodes ago. Uh, I had never had it. I never tried it in the 90s. But he put them in the little uh, cooler up front, and he just put them in. So I know I grabbed them and took them home, stuck them in the fridge for a while because if you try something like a soda for the first time like you want it to be a good experience and you yeah, don't want to be, be like cold yeah yeah and uh and they were sitting in there and my wife had came home and i'd had them in there for like a day or so and so we actually tried it at the same time like i gave her the bottle poured some in a glass and uh you know first taste it was well it's it's pepsi and then drank a little bit more and it's like eh, it's something a little different about it and we're both like i kind of like this yeah, it is It is very different, and there is that little bit, something, like a hint of something else. It's like Pepsi and something else. I, I, I liked it, though. I was like, you know, I don't know if it's something I would drink all the time, and I don't think it's one of those, it is one of those things that was just kind of um, seasonal, I would say. Like something I would see every once in a while, I'm like, ooh, this calls for a Crystal Pepsi. But I don't see myself, you know, since I've drank a couple of bottles of it, I don't see myself at the end of the day being like, man, I could really use a Crystal Pepsi right now. You know, I like that idea a lot of seasonal ones, kind of like how around Christmas you'll have the cranberry ginger ale at sometimes they don't have normally. Like if Crystal Pepsi would come out just for the summer, you know, I think that'd be great. Like, you know, you're not going to like overdose on it, get like too much, weigh yourself out. Uh, I, I had the one... And uh, I've been looking. I didn't see any at the food line, but I'd, I'd like to grab like a couple more just to you know try it again a time or two. I, I'm not exactly sure if you gave me like two cups of it. Like, could I tell the difference? Uh, I don't know if it's mental, but the clear one kind of tastes a little bit uh, like less syrupy. And, and like I said, you know, it just it could be the look, you know. But I can actually tell the difference. Have you seen those noodles that are uh, like uh, little rotinis that are red, green, and noodle colored yeah yeah i can actually tell the difference i was just telling my wife says the green one tastes different she's like no it doesn't it's just, it's just color and i was like no so do it we did a taste test blindfold and everything and uh i was able to tell which ones were the green i didn't try <laughs> with the red because honestly they they tasted the same but yeah there's the spinach supposed to be spinach tomato and a noodle flavored <laughs> 
I, I do like those noodles. But uh, speaking of food, it's going to be totally off the subject of food. I'm going to be talking about a little bit about gaming news. And, I, I, you know, I'm going to start the gaming news with something very positive. And that is the Sony Flash sale that's going on this weekend. Now, while we're recording this, you know, it's Sunday. And I think this is, I think this uh, sale is going to be going on until the 22nd. So until Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. But they have a special theme. It's like uh, like medieval or fantasy and sci-fi themed. So a lot of the games are just really knocked down. I'm probably going to buy some tonight. Probably after the podcast or some I want to look into, like uh, Dark Cloud 2, you know, on PS2. It's released now on PS4. You can get it for five ninety nine. dollars uh, Saturday Morning RPG, that's a game I've been wanting to play for a while. It's now $2.99. Uh, let's see, Wild Arms 3, that's PS2 titles, five. it's five ninety nine. They got a lot of PS2 titles that are five ninety nine, and that's great i mean yeah. i love the it, i know that like it's probably a sale i don't know uh, if maybe they're normally like 9.99 but I, I loved with how the ps1 games those were a pretty steady price of just around like five bucks uh yeah i think that makes it definitely way more appealing you know five and ten it's not that big of a difference but when you're just kind of looking you know you see an older game it, maybe you even have it and you don't feel like plugging in your PS2 or trying to find the game and you're like, yeah, five bucks. It, you know, it uh, uh, makes it very easy to go ahead and try to make that purchase. Uh, sales like this, I, I really love them. I, uh, I kind of stopped looking on PSN as much because I, I ran out of room, my PS3, and it's just you got to do the delete and shuffle. So I do like to go on with my Vita and uh, mm-hmm. check out some sales on there because I still have, you know, room on that. So. It's it's always just fun, you know. I, I do love going on and seeing what's on sale, like what's new, and you might find some you know new, strange, interesting, just simple game like you've never heard of, and just get to try it out at a really good price. Yeah, the sales going on for PS4, PS3, and Vita. Uh, you know, some of the PS3 titles like Final Fantasy IX's two ninety nine, Final Fantasy uh four, no, it's Final Fantasy five, is two ninety nine. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Chronicles of Mysteria, the classic arcade game, is four forty nine. I mean, it, it's pretty nice. I mean, they got some of the Dragon Age games, uh, like Dragon Age Inquisition Game of the Year Edition. It was normally thirty nine ninety nine, but they have it on sale for fifteen ninety nine. Or you can get the Deluxe Edition, which I'm not. I'm not sure the difference between the Game of the Year and Deluxe. I think maybe Game of the Year has all the DLC, where the Deluxe maybe maybe a couple of DLCs. But, yeah, it gets kind of confusing with all those uh, yeah. different versions. But, I mean, you can get Dragon Age Inquisition, the Deluxe Edition. Normally it was $19.99. They're selling it for $7.99. Also, uh, a game I really, rec- I re- really recommend uh, people to play is Dust. It's um normally fourteen ninety nine, but it's on sale for three point seventy four. Three dollars and seventy four cents. <laughs> That's a weird number. <laughs> that is that is really weird. But yeah, I'm looking at these games right here and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna take twenty bucks and just get a couple of PS4 games. Just buy a couple of them. And I mean I love these little flash shells. I mean, I I admit they're not like the Steam cells. You know, but it is it is nice that you know we get this sort of thing with console gaming too. That is pretty nice. Yeah, I always mean to. Uh, I'm gonna check out and see since I've been playing my uh, 360 a lot more. I'm gonna go check out some of its games online because you know they got a lot of different ones over there. And uh, our good friend Rob Luther of the Retro Junkies just gave me a couple of 360 uh, gift cards. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I was pretty excited when I got those. I was like, he just sent me the you know back some cards the numbers scratched off. And I was like, are those like <laughs> Xbox points? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I, I don't need them. You know, I'd sold mine. And I mean, they were, you know, both two of them for like 25 bucks. I was like, wow, dude. I'm like, That's nice. so, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to jumping on there and uh, seeing what all I can find since, you know, I have room on my 360. It's great. Uh, speaking of 360, let's go ahead and put this out of the bag. There was a an original digital only 360 game that just got a physical release uh thanks to limited run that you and i both were able to put a pre-order down for and that is shadow complex yeah that was the game when i had got a 360 again 
uh, it didn't have, it was one of those older ones, I actually had to go buy the little antenna thing to stick on the back to go online, but uh, I, I had to go online to uh, to get Shadow Complex, I, I made it a point, that was the first thing I got, I always heard about it, a friend of mine had told me, and I mean, you know, you guys that have played it, like, no, I think it's 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 quite a loved game, you know, definitely that mm-hmm. Metroidvania style, uh, it's just smooth, you know, but it's got guns, you know, a little bit more like kind of like sci-fi edge to it government uh, robot suits and stuff like that you know <laughs> but it was always on 360 and it seemed like a title that was staying there so I mean I was really shocked when I saw that it was coming out on PS4 it just it kind of seemed like something that would not happen like I could see it happening on uh, Xbox One Yeah, but to actually see it come out on a Sony system just kind of blew my mind i I know the company that made it i always thought they were just kind of connected to microsoft so i don't know if it's because it's a shorter run or what kind of deal they worked out but man i I think it's just that's awesome well i think limited run works exclusively with sony because they they always put out ps4 and vita games i mean that right there could also be an incentive to, to pick a ps4 over an Xbox One, if you want those indie titles in physical format, uh, Limited Run has you covered. Now, the only thing about Limited Run is their name is called Limited Run for a reason. These games, you know... Now, Shadow Complex, they had a lot more uh, in stock, actually. Yeah, they printed... I think normally their runs are around 3,000, and they did about double yeah. uh, for Shadow Complex, around like 7,000. They have a bundle with the with the CD you can yeah. get as well. Did you so did I, you get that one? I just got the no, game. No, I, I went for just the game. It, it's not anything, uh, you know, I'm not too, too big on getting soundtracks and stuff like that. Uh, you know, very, very good price too. I mean, I'm talking there, 25 bucks, uh, and, you know, and granted you could download the game for like 15 or less, but still, the fact that most of these games you know, are were only digital, the fact that you can get them, I actually was surprised they were that low. I was kind of thinking they were going to be higher. You could get the soundtrack yeah. bundle for I think forty, but uh, after shipping, mine was like around like thirty one sixty three mm-hmm. or you know it's something weird like that. But uh, I, it's weird. I actually uh, I have that coming, and then uh, my brother had bought me a couple of PS four games. So uh, technically, I kind of have like three PS four games as of now, and I still don't have the system yet. But I'm getting yeah. a head start. You yeah, know? you know that's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean that's what I did with uh, my PSP. You know, um, not the first time I had the PSP, but the second time, like the one that you gave me for my birthday a couple of years back, I remember we were talking and, you know, you were like, yeah, you know, I can send you this PSP and blah, blah, blah. And I, since I knew I was getting the PSP and PSP games were starting to kind of, you know, falter out of the GameStops in my town, I don't think anywhere in my game, any GameStops in my town sell PSP games anymore. So I went ahead and I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy the essentials. I went ahead and bought, you know... You know, Dracula X, I went ahead and rebought the Dracula X Chronicles. I went went back and bought, you know, the Capcom collection, you know, stuff like that, stuff that I knew I would really like. So by the time that I got the PSP, I had like a, a good library and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually a a good investment and it kinda pushes you more towards getting that console. You're like, Man, I got these games. I gotta get a console to play it now. You know? Yeah, I kind of go around like I was getting another one. I have the uh, Sonic Adventure 2 on Dreamcast, mm. the uh, Japanese version oh, yeah. that I had got from my brother when I bought his Dreamcast. And, uh, you know, I was selling some games to him anyway, and he'd asked me about that one. He was like, you know, he's like, if you let it, you want to let it go. He's like, you know, just name your price. And I was like, eh, I was like, how about just get me that uh, Until Dawn game? I was like, I think it's like 20 bucks or less on like PS4. So <laughs> that'd be like another one I'm going to add on to. So, you know, oh, yeah, I'm... and you'll like that game, dude. That that game to me was like playing an 80s uh, slasher film. Yeah, kind of like a, a like a kick of that. I remember hearing that. Um, there's another one that's uh, coming out. I can't remember the name of it. It seems kind of similar to it. And then they're all, you know, making that Friday the 13th mm-hmm. game to kind of get this little wave of those and uh, i've heard good things about that one most people i know that have played it they uh really enjoyed it and uh said it's worth checking out so i'm like i said i'm going ahead and trying to uh, snag up a few so i will be ready and, and thinking of the ps4 too uh i hear supposedly on uh, i think september 7th 
at uh, New York, they're going to announce, make an announcement on the uh, PS4 Neo. Ooh. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because I actually heard uh, through the grapevine we might be actually hearing about the Nintendo NX in September as well. But I, I'm, I'm really curious about the Neo. I don't know if I'm going to get it just because um, I don't have a 4K television. But, I mean, I like smaller consoles too, though. Like the Xbox... The Xbox One S, it looks really, really nice, but there's really no point for me to get it. And See, they, they have that rumor with it, too, that they could be doing the Neo and a slim version of the PS4. Because, huh. you know, they keep saying it's not really going to replace it. It's just going to be sold alongside of it. You know, the whole thing to me is a little bit confusing. I, I'm just kind of trying to wait to see what will be the yeah. best deal. And, you know, I really want to get, like, a terabyte one, and I don't see any around here at the moment so you know there could be a price drop stores might want to get some of the stock off the shelves a few stores are doing some deals i think for around like 350 or so the playstation like i don't know it's like three four games uh, a few different places so you know with uh and also after, was it everything october and on all the games people make that come out they're supposed to be you know have that whatever they're calling that little extra bump that the Neo is going to give it to where they're supposed to have the function for that. And then you're just regular PS4. So mm. I'm really just kind of waiting to see what kind of deals pop around and, and find the best one. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, also, I mean, Xbox one right now has gotten really cheap since the S model came out and we'll see the same thing with the Sony as well. Cause I mean, I was actually at a pawn shop the other day and they were selling Xbox ones for 180. I was like, wow, like under 200 bucks. Now, granted, it's a pawn shop, and I don't know if I'd want to buy a console at a pawn shop, but, I mean, I think even at uh, GameStop, you can get a used Xbox One for 220 now. It's insane. You know, console's been out for two years, and it's already, you know, under $300. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's a good thing. I know I'm not going to complain about it. That's, that's, like I said, for me, I don't know about a newer, a slimmer. It's just kind of whatever's the... Uh, the best deal. I hadn't heard too many people having issues with PS4s, but uh, sometimes you think there's always some little improvements or things they could make better, you know, on a, you know, whether it's a Neo or like a slim model. So just going to kind of wait and see. And then I've heard more with the, the Xbox uh, Scorpio that it was just, it's mainly being described as a, like a high end piece of equipment. So yeah, I mean, it I, seems I... like that might be kind of pricey when that one hits. Well, um, funny you mention that because that's a good segue into this next article I was going to talk about that I got from um, ngadget.com, where it says Microsoft says this might be the last console generation. Um, it also explains its confusing E3 statements on Project Scorpio exclusives. Now, this is something that's been in, on everyone's mind for the last you know couple of months about the Scorpio, and wondering if this is going to be Microsoft's swan song. Um, now they they questioned uh, Phil Spencer, and he said Phil Spencer said that all accessories and all games work across all versions of Xbox One. But he also said Project Scorpio is specifically the only Xbox that's powerful enough to run VR. I don't I don't quite understand how these two statements can coexist. And they're talking the more and more I scheme through this article. They're talking about how they really they really want the future of Xbox to be like PC gaming. You know, they're kind of wanting the Xbox One to kind of be more of a brand than a home console. You know, like instead of buying a new Xbox every year or, you know, every four years, you buy upgrades, you know, for the hardware. And um, I don't know. This is, this is interesting. I mean, this is, to me, this is setting... Microsoft and the Xbox brand uh, differently from PlayStation, definitely. It's it's really interesting. I mean, if you could get it, like you know, we said before, with talking with some of the upgradable consoles that they've kind of been talking about, and that's what it kind of seems, you know, like that Scorpio is, where you know you could just spend a lot less. I mean, I think things like that, you know, if the idea I think is great, and you know, if done right, it could be very you know, consumer friendly too, instead of having to go out, you know, we all know that initial launch of something is usually about 500 bucks. And if you still 
you know, if there's not really that big of a need, you can just maybe change out certain parts of it. I'd love to see something like that. Um, you know, we said before too, out of all the companies, you know, Microsoft is the one I could see just, you know, walking away from having a console at all. But, you know, except they can get away with just doing that one with the upgrade, you know, maybe that's the way they're going. It's, it's all just really interesting to see what comes out. You know, it seems like you get a little bit more and more info, uh, every few weeks. Yeah. And I mean, until then, I, you know, with, with gaming, you know, until then I, I look at it all as like rumors and writings on the wall. I don't take any, anything of it as, uh, hard, hard facts until it's, until it's spoken from the actual companies. That's why I don't, that's why I don't do a whole lot of like, uh, like gaming news videos because, you know, you could sit there and spend, you know, all day ranting or, or making some sort of video in front of the camera and then next week that video is totally obsolete because the thing that you were just talking about was completely false. So, I mean, that's the, that's the thing, man. Like with the NX, I've heard so much stuff about the NX. Um, I've heard different things about the, the controller patents, the, the freaking hardware. It's going to be powerful. It's not going to be powerful. Um, I have heard that, you know, they are going to have quote unquote third party support and the, and the fact they have Square Enix uh, making some games for the NX. Um, you know, they're, they're talking about even putting Dragon Quest builders on the NX. That's a rumor going around. And, you know, and I, I don't know. To me, to me, I can't just go off, you know, even the websites that I'm giving references to, like Engadget. I can't just go off what they say. I have to get the the real news from Phil Spencer like a Phil Spencer it goes on the stage and he's like you know what this is possibly going to be the last consoleized Xbox and now we're going to have this little hub thing then I'm like okay but until then I it's all writings on the wall yeah, it's exciting you, though you hear a whole bunch of of nothing but sometimes the ones like with the NX you know where you hear so little to the point where it's almost kind of odd that you know yeah you hear so little but all people can really do is just speculate and it's interesting to hear you know what people think but that's all it is right now it's just what people think and i kind of like the unknownness me of too it all. You know, i like it it's like, I, I don't need to hear everything. I'm, I'd like to see them drop like a big bomb and, you know, be like, oh, you know, something really awesome come out. But I, you know, I like it because it brings excitement. You know, some people, they get really worried about it and they get worried about the longevity of a company because they don't know what they're doing. But to me, it's exciting because, you know, we live in a day and age where we have, you know, information at the tip of our fingers you know you, back in the day if you didn't know who played the movie you would ask your friends and you guys would debate like who was that guy who played in the thing now you can just google search it on your phone you know and and we kind of still have that magic with the nx and that's one thing i will commend nintendo on about the fact that nintendo hasn't had hardly any evidence of the nx come out and a lot of people are saying well this is going to hurt nintendo you know, especially when it comes out, no one's going to really know about it. But the thing is, if it's if it's as big as Nintendo is making it out to be, the moment they announce it, people are going to be flocking to it. That's the way I look at it. We don't we don't need to know six months before what it is before it's actually announced. Yeah, that that is. I mean, to me, it's a little bit more of one of the more exciting consoles. You know, you just hear like PS4. I'm like, oh, you know, cool. You know, Xbox One. Like, ah, yeah, you know cool you imagine it's just going to look like a system and nintendo I, I like you just never know what their system is going to end up looking like like what's the controller going to look like there's uh, there's just so many variables you know and it is just fun i, I like not knowing it's kind of like with wrestling wrestling was a lot more uh, exciting and fun back in the 90s with the monday night war and everything because you didn't know you might hear some things if you got some dirt sheets but you know online didn't really hit people weren't on there as much you know now you know when somebody's gonna debut you know a month before they debut yeah that's just that uh that openness and not knowing it does it, just, it makes it fun and exciting you know to me it makes me look forward to you know, more information, just a picture, you know, like anything, you know, actually coming from Nintendo, it's going to be exciting because we know nothing. Exactly. Now, uh, speaking of Nintendo, they have 
uh, released something, not Nintendo, but Retro USB uh, finally uh, released the Nintendo AVS. You remember we were talking about this? I think it was a- episode eighty-five when we had uh, we had Mister Vote. We had him on the show. Um, ah. You remember we were talking about this console that was uh, the supported HDMI, had four controller slots. It could play Famicom. Uh, yeah, Nintendo. this is one. That, it seems like a more uh, affordable version of the uh, Nintendo. What they call the Nintendo AVS. Uh, there was that one that was like five hundred dollars. Yeah, it was the one that was like made of like spaceship metal or some shit. <laughs> and gold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that one. This is the more affordable version, and I mean, this looks really sweet. I mean, my my thing is, I I've, I love these con- these cloned consoles so much, and I, I see one, I'm like, ooh, I want to get that, or I see another one, I'm like, ooh, I want to get that, you know. And I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, I can't get all these. I can't have you know a bunch of clones of like a certain console, but. This one seems really cool. I mean, for some of you guys who haven't heard about it, you know, it's put out by Retro USB. It looks really sleek. It almost has like a DeLorean kind of look to it. Um, you know, with the way the the front of the hatch comes up and the way the front of it looks with the uh the four controller ports, but it has HDMI support, it has 720p widescreen and outputs uh 60 hertz. That's NTSC and 50 hertz and PAL. Um, the audio seems to be pretty good. Display is uh, vis- is visible pixel scaling, including integer options of 101, 4, 3, and 5, 3 uh, with scan lines. So you can have scan lines on it. This is what I like about it. It's got, it's got front-loading NES and top-loading Famicom. And it's also got the Famicom expansion port as well. So I believe you can hook up the Famicom disk drive to it. Yeah. Yeah. You That's can. that is awesome. And the controller the controller is uh let's see, 'cause they're they're I'm looking at a controller and the controller looks like the normal NES controller, but I think they do have a Bluetooth uh controller that you can hook into it that looks like the advantage but has an actual D pad instead of the little circle thing. But um, yeah, I think it's about one hundred and eighty-five dollars. I believe that's the price of it, and it looks good. I mean, if you're if you're a, a Nintendo enthusiast and you want, you know, a, a really good NES clone that's not an actual clone that's you know got original parts and all that stuff, and it actually has out. original uh, power and reset buttons on it. Yeah, like I've heard they're actually old Nintendo stock that they got from somewhere. So it's kind of nice to have that actual little bit on there. Yeah, definitely, you know, it is for that that enthusiast, a little bit of a more hardcore collector that wants a, some of the best possible ways to play their Nintendo games. It's one of those ones that's not going to be, you know, for everybody because that price is just, uh, you know, it's a little bit high for some. I, I think maybe for what you're getting, it could be kind of reasonable. Yeah, yeah, it's not something that... I mean, I see 200 bucks, and I'm like, mm, you know, I don't know if I want to spend that much on a clone console. Not right now. Uh, I'm still looking at that Emu Retro Pie that um, that they're, that this other company is coming out with based out of Arizona. I know uh, my friend John, Gaming Through the Decades, he went to Game On Expo and actually met the, the creator of, the, of this Raspberry Pi uh, emulation box, and it is awesome. It... It's very small. I think it's about 170 bucks. It can play everything from you know the Atari 2600 up to the PlayStation One. It you know uses USB controllers. It comes with a Super Nintendo USB controller and a PlayStation USB controller. And you know with it being USB, I mean you can get any sort of controller from you know PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3 and hook it up through there or you can go on Amazon and order yourself a you know an NES USB controller and hook it up and um, I, I think it's cool I, I like it because one reason I wanted to kind of get is in case I go on trips or if I go to someone's house and they're having like a game night I can bring the Raspberry Pi over and be like let's play some retro stuff and have like a whole buffet of games to choose from I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, sounds like that one will have you know a little bit more to it. I know a lot of people have just kind of made their own where you can get yeah. the Raspberry Pis for... You know, people say you can get them for 35 I mean, that's like the 
standard low low price i've looked at some that has a few more things like you might need or want like a case the cables mm-hmm. and uh you know, things like that for around like 70 uh, which is still not bad but uh anything that makes anything easier i'm all up for because i'm just kind of lazy so if this one costs a little bit more but it's just uh overall easier to use and it's something i would definitely look into because uh I really need to get on playing a, a, a lot more, you know. I want to get up on some ar- old arcade games that I just have not played in forever. Like Rolling Thunder? Oh, uh, yeah, I've always played Rolling Thunder. <laughs> I, guess I, I have the one on PSP that I think it's supposed to be like the arcade version, but uh, yeah, got to play that one, man. Oh, yeah. Well, what we're going to do, guys, is um, we're going to take a short little break because our little 30-minute segment's about up. And what we're going to do is when we come back, we're going to be talking about console exclusives. And this is kind of a, a broad subject, <laughs> something James came up with, where we're going to talk about, you know, games that kind of allured us to a console or maybe, you know, that sort of thing. Does that sound about right, James? Yeah, it's just kind of those broad ones, you know, and some that go with certain franchises, uh on one system versus the other, uh, the franchises that were on both of them but had different games. It, I just kind of thought of this topic from the Shadow Complex, which, you know, like I said, was always on 360, kind of popping up mm-hmm. on PS4. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit broad and all over the place, but it should be fun either way. Exactly. And we'll be right back after this little uh, music from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And just sit back, guys, relax. We'll be right back. Alright guys, and we are back, and that was some uh, music from Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis classic, classic platformer. And uh, one of the reasons why I played that song was because um, a really interesting Let's Play video I watched. Uh, it's from my friend Travis Goss, who does Rose Color Let's Plays. And he did a Let's Play on a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 prototype. He found the ROM that was online... And this was the prototype that was used uh, for promotional, you know, kiosks, and it was also featured on Nick Arcade. And I was like, man, this is kind of cool. And the stage, it was the first two stages, and it wasn't really that different uh, other than Tails wasn't in the picture. You just played a Sonic, and the music you guys heard was normally what you would hear during the, like, casino Zones, but this was actually used for the first stages. I guess they composed this song before they came out with the original song that you hear in the beginning of Sonic 2. But I thought that was kind of cool, and uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can find it online myself. I can probably just message them and be like, "Hey, where'd you find that prototype?" Because I'd like to try it out. That I mean, that's really really cool. That's one thing I kind of like about emulation. It helps preserve, you know, history. Things you, know? you never would have gotten to play, you know, where there's games we never got, games that never, you know, technically came out. Sometimes ones that didn't get completely finished. Uh, 
things that just normally just would be lost forever. It is really cool to have that ability to be able to find and play those today. And, and play it. I mean, that's the thing, is to play it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could get that Sonic 2 prototype somewhere on eBay one day for, you know, the same price you'd pay for a brand new car or a down payment on a mortgage at this point, <laughs> the way retro gaming's gone. But, you know, just to play it and just to have that nostalgia boom you got roms and that was that, that was the funny thing about travis you know travis is a very like he was a very purist collector and he's still like that but i remember when him and i first met you know i would always talk about roms and and emulation he would be kind of like ah you know it's just not the same i'd rather just play it on the console and blah blah and then he messaged me like a couple of weeks ago and he's like dude i totally know what you mean now about emulation and roms i mean it it really does help preserve. It's convenient, and uh, you know, if you just like to play video games, if you just want to play games, emulation's not that bad. I know a lot of people kind of look down on it, but it's it's really not. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's like that in any kind of you know, whether we collect genre or you know, oh whatever yeah, you call it with, with gaming. There's always the people who be a little bit more you know, elitist, some have their reasoning and they're fine, and more of the elitist, you know, some of the more snobbier ones, because uh, some people do just, you know, look down upon it. When it's oh, like, yeah. I, don't, I can see you be like, hey, that's not my thing, like, but you don't have to be like the, ugh, like, you play those. Yeah, and then you brought up a good point. It's in every hobby. It's not just gaming. I mean, you get the comic book collectors that, you know, I could show them my reprint of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue one, I got it at Free Comic Book Day. It was free. And I'm like, hey, this is the first issue of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I could be like, this is awesome. I read it, and it was great. And I could show it to some, you know, snobby comic book collector. It's like, oh, yeah, I had that same comic, but the original print, and it's VGA graded, you know, A+, and it's in this shrink wrap, and whatever. Whatever. And uh, I, I think because, like I, I'm older than some people, like younger people that watch wrestling. Sometimes I see stuff they'll like post and write. It's just like, like what are you talking about? Like Mark, like, you you only know, watching like two years, you know, or two months. And somebody older than me, you know, I, I think would probably like know more. I always feel like I'm more right and know more than other people. I just don't act on it or say anything, you know. I just keep it to myself, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're sitting there, this reading comes, but like, quit being a dick, Mark. Yeah, quit being yeah. a dick. <laughs> but, yeah, we're going to be talking about some uh, console exclusives, some launch stuff that made us, you know, kind of want to get a certain console or, or maybe, you know, changed our mind on a certain console, you know, when we finally got to play it. And I, I want to ask, James, in your opinion, I want to put you on the spot here. What, in your opinion, console had some of the best launch titles? Oh, man. The, um, <laughs> let's see, what was the one? Pro I mean, I'd say I didn't really experience it, but, I mean, the initial Nintendo one seemed like it had a pretty good one as far as it being, like, varied, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see, Super NES didn't know. I didn't have many... Um, Man, was it the Dreamcast was one of the ones that had a whole bunch? It seems oh, yeah. like as it got later on, really, I mean, the PS2 era around like Dreamcast was the ones where you seemed like you got better launch, just more stuff. Now, I mean, you had a more more quality, you know, where Super NES could launch with Mario World Pilot Wings, and that was okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just, yeah. Now you can't do that, but you know, with the quality of the game, you know, some of the games coming out with them. But I'd probably say, you know, for older ones, the, the Nintendo with a lot of the black box ones that came out just seemed like a good first start, you know, lots of choices. And, you know, it was it was good for its time, too, because this one, you know, console gaming was, you know, coming up from the ashes. And it was a great way to introduce, say, a new generation and get their feet wet in the world of gaming. You know, I could I could see where where, you know, a lot of those black box tiles, like you had games like Hogan's Alley and. You, of course, you had Super Mario, and uh, you had wrestling, and uh, Ur Urban wrestling was. You had amazing. Urban Champion. Uh, <laughs> so bad for the kid that got that. You know, like for us, you know, so many people grew up, you know, with that Nintendo, and I always kind of wondered because I knew so few many people that had a Master System. You always knew like one or two people, 
And it's just kind of like, how did you end up with that? I mean, Nintendo really was the one to yeah. have. And, you know, we've said it, it got way more things because of its uh, licensing policies. It really wasn't fair, you know. To, I think Master System was really good for uh, what they had. But oh, yeah. certain games on it, pro wrestling on Master System is terrible. If you wanted to play wrestling games, you needed a Nintendo. Yeah. But... You know, some of the games, the, the Mario was just a title that always stood out where I don't really feel the original Master System had, you know, I guess they had like Alex Kidd. Yeah, but I mean, even Alex Kidd compared to Mario is like, you know, eh. yeah. you know I, I love Alex Kidd, don't get me wrong. And I would love to see a new Alex Kidd game, but Alex Kidd just could not measure up to the phenomenon of Super Mario Brothers. No, and having that that mascot, you know, Mario was the one, the mascot you kind of had Link, it's a secondary, you know, and, and Master System had, you know, Golvalius, very yeah. Zelda-like game, but still not quite as good, and they didn't have that mascot, you know, when you had that Mario and Link, it became so recognizable, that was the one where I imagine so many of those games is what drew people over if they were a Master System kid, but some Master System kids... They actually turned into Genesis kids. I yep. guess there was just some like Sega families. And that was one of the times when I remember, you know, it's like, what is this new system? You might not have known a whole lot about the master system, but something came out with that blue guy we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Sonic, Sonic was one that was, uh, man, I think he was really able to catch a, a lot of kids eyes. Uh, I played it finally at a friend's house. and I, I kind of sucked at it. So. It didn't really make me want to get a Genesis, but seeing that, I could see how that did. You know, he was so fast. So there was something, you know, the music was great. There was something so very distinct about that. I think that made a lot of people jump over, you know, into the uh, the Genesis and why it became so, you know, became really popular for a while. Well, well, Sonic was also, like, so edgy, too. Like, he was so 90s, where, you know, Mario... Mario was kind of like Mickey Mouse in like the time, kind of like timeless kind of fashion. Like, other than like I guess like the Super Mario Super Show, Mario really didn't have an identity. Mario was just there, you know. Like if a, a Nintendo game would come out, like say you know a new tennis game would come out, Mario would be the judge, or say Punch Out, he was the referee. It was just like Mario was just tied to Nintendo. It's just the way it was. Where Sonic had more of a personality you know he was he was very you know hip you know he he had like red blasting shoes he ran real fast he smart talked i mean even in the commercials they would show him like back talking dr robotnik or dr eggman however you want to call him you know back talking and and doing certain things and he was like he was kind of like bart simpson you know yeah he had that it was almost geared a little bit you'd feel towards teenagers and yeah. they would kind of put down nintendo in their commercials like mario he's just a little schlop you know yeah sonic he's got the dude i mean so many people were drawn over to that uh, the fastness it was just exciting I mean, like nothing else moved that fast uh mario surely did but sonic went a little bit bit too fast for me but <laughs> the thing is the genesis was when they started to get you know more of those titles Nintendo still had a long run, and the thing with the console is kind of funny how Genesis was still kind of competing, you know, with Nintendo before mm. the Super Nintendo came out. Yeah. So you had that step up, but so many franchises that were never on the Master System finally came up on the Genesis, and I think sometimes when you get a lot more bigger comparisons with them is when the Super NES and the Genesis were both out, because now you had those choices, you know. You had the Mario, great Mario world. You had the Sonic. Then, Castlevania Four. Yep. That was one everybody played, everybody loved. But the Genesis ended up getting Bloodlines. Now, as far as the time frame, we might have gotten Dracula X by then, too. This seemed like they might have been competing a bit more. But the Genesis with this exclusive titles, it just, I don't know, there's always something a little different about them. They were still there. They, they were good. You know, I mean, Bloodlines, I thought was really amazing. Uh, set up different boss fights, lots of like mid bosses. Yeah. As compared to just having the main ones. 
And another thing Genesis had that Nintendo don't was a little bit more violence. You know, Genesis, like I said, a little bit more geared towards teenagers, a little bit more adult, a little bit more mature rated. Well, like Bloodlines had blood in it. And I remember the blood in Bloodlines. I remember the zombies looked more grotesque in Bloodlines because they actually had like flies going around them. And, and, you know, you battle that uh, that dog that uh, demon dog and like the first stage at mid boss. And when you beat him and you see his insides and his innards all like, you know, mushed up and making all these weird noises, you didn't see that with a Nintendo version, you know, with Nintendo's Castlevania four, you didn't really see that. And that, that was the thing about Genesis. Like Genesis always had that little bit of edge, you know, I remember, you know, you would also compare like when people would talk about their consoles and stuff like that, they would compare which version of a game was better? You know, like Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was a lot better on the Genesis if you were wanting more of that arcade purist feel. It was better on the Genesis because you had blood. You didn't have these altered fatalities. Um, where the Super Nintendo looked better, but it didn't have the blood. And there was fatalities that were altered and they weren't as violent. But, yeah, you would have that discussion in the playground. Being like, you know, well, I got Mortal Kombat on the Genesis, and it's better than the one on the Super Nintendo. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, that one's a, a very good example of one, I think, that would make people jump over, you know, to the other side. That really wasn't exclusive. That was, uh, yeah, that, that was a big deal. Because oh, Mortal yeah. Kombat was really only good, you know, because of the blood. And when they came out, you got the one. Genesis has got that. You had to do the code, you know, but it was there. And the Super NES one always just... I thought it played better, but it was just missing out. And you could still burn people to death into a pile of ashes, but you couldn't rip somebody's head off. Yeah. That, that one just kind of confused me. Yeah, and, and and the thing is, too, like, I remember, um, I remember, like, the Genesis, the the titles they had were, were so archaic. Like, that was the thing, like, um, the Genesis had so many great arcade titles, and that's kind of what they thrived on a lot when the Genesis first launched was like, this is going to be the arcade at home. I mean, a lot of good Capcom, like uh, Strider. Strider on the Genesis is more arcade faithful than the NES version. Now, I do like the NES version of Strider, but the arcade version was right up the Genesis alley. You had that and you had, you know, games like Forgotten Worlds and... And, of course, Golden Axe and Alter Beast. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, now everyone talks about frames uh, per second and, you know, resolution. This is like the most HD, you know, 4K, blah, 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 blah. But back then, what made a game, like, so freaking awesome was how close it was to the arcade counterpart. You remember that? Oh, yeah, that was a a big deal. Uh, Kind of those, the age of disappointment with the Nintendo really... You know, whether it was Double Dragon, uh, it's just those, you know, and you'd get those versions of the games, and they were really their own thing. And we loved them for what they were. But back then, you really wanted to play the arcade at home. And Genesis, they definitely did that. They came out and had these games. Your Altered Beast, your Golden Axe. I mean, Golden Axe was uh, one of my favorite arcade games, like, by far. And having those on a home system, that was just... I know it's kind of funny how it was like such a big deal, and I could see people now not even sure what arcades are, but it's like you just wanted that at home. One of my favorite games uh, and I loved in the arcade was a game called Kajeki. Huh. Uh, it lo- kind of like a little underground fighting game. Uh, it's kind of silly looking. Uh, maybe plays a little bit more like uh, compared to a boxing game, like a Ring King kind of game, uh, but really cool. And Genesis had that. Uh, Street Smarts. I, I love that game. That's a SNK game, two on two fighter. Played in the arcade so much, and uh, found out years later, you know, it was on the Genesis because I, I didn't have a Genesis. I, I kind of accepted the fact that I was only going to have one system. You know, to, it, two weren't happening. So I just kind of prepared myself, you know, to be disappointed to not be able to play these. But if you knew somebody, you know, and now I have one, I can get all the games I want. And, it was just great. Uh, Golden Axe, thinking of Golden Axe too, it was really the, uh, Sega was kind of your barbarian system. If you liked barbarian games, kind of yeah. like Golden Axe, Rastan, that was on the Master System. 
Good port too. Another exclusive. Yeah. Now Rastan two. That one's pretty awful. Uh, Blades of Vengeance. It's another uh, cool two player game with lots of blood in it. But uh, if you liked your barbarian games, the Sega was the way to go. Yeah, and I got my I got my Sega pretty late into the game. I got my Genesis, and I didn't know anything about the Master System until I was an early teenager because it, it just wasn't. It was I had new new one that had. I didn't know anybody that had a Master System, you know. So when I heard about, it, I was like Master System. I thought the first Sega console was the Genesis, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah. By the time I got the Genesis, I was so ready to play some games I never got to play on the Super Nintendo. Uh, one of my favorite Genesis games that you don't hear a whole lot of people talk about is uh, the Vector Man series. Oh uh, yeah, I, I those games were hard as hell, but it was like. Donkey Kong Country graphics mixed with like Mega Man gameplay. It was so cool. I loved Vector Man, and that was a later title. But I remember, you know, wanting to get that. And um, it's funny when you get those consoles kind of late, and it opens up that doorway of games that you always wanted to play. And now you finally get to play. And you're like, yeah, I finally get to play Sonic and Streets of Rage, and you know, Super Hang On. I finally get to play that stuff. It's so funny. Man, uh, another older one, kind of around that time, we we overlooked though was the Turbo Graphics. Yeah. Uh, as far as games you could play at home, Splatterhouse, definitely on the top of the list. Uh, you know, we later got them on Genesis, but the, the initial port of it, Turbo Graphics, only place to get that. Pac-Land, of course. You know, for me, nobody else probably cared, but I thought that was just uh, I'd go up to Putt Putt and rent it out. You know, by the hour, just to play up there. And play Pac Land. Uh, also, pretty cool on the Barbarian side, you know, with Legendary Axe. Uh, but Bonk, I mm. think that was a big standout title because he even kind of came the mascot where, you know, he ended up on Nintendo too. Keith Courage was the, you know, uh, initial game, but I guess he was kind of lame. So Bonk became the, you know, pseudo mascot for them. And he was another one, he had some attitude. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the Bonk games, and you want to talk about really obscure back then. I mean, where the Master System was hard to come by, and you didn't hear a whole lot of people talking about Master System. And I'm talking about the demographic for where I was from, you know, you know, being a kid growing up during that era. I didn't hear anything about the Master System, but the Turbo Graphics was even more obscure back then. You know, I can remember going into Toys R Us and going into Walmart or far more. You know, go, going into these places and not seeing a lick of TurboGrafx-16. I didn't know about the TurboGrafx-16 until I bought a Tips and Tricks magazine. And it was like one of those, it was one of those magazines they come out with every year that would have like a collection of everything of that whole year of all the consoles and stuff like that. And I remember it was, I wish I still had this magazine too because it was really cool. It was really thick. It had, you know, accessory reviews and, of course, codes, but also had a little bit of uh, the gaming's history, like the console history and stuff. And I remember that's where I saw the Turbo Graphics, And I was like, Turbo Graphics 16 And they were like, oh, it's the 16-bit console, you know. And um, I didn't know anything about it. And I was just like, man, I really hate that I missed out on that. But, unfortunately, that was, that was a lot of Nintendo thing, you know. And Nintendo had such a huge grasp on third party and... I don't know what the folks over at uh, Hudson Soft and uh, NCE were thinking with, with the Turbo Graphics because they were the problem with Turbo Graphics. They tried to uh, they tried to market market it the same way they did in Japan. They they had all the advertising in bigger cities for the Turbo Graphics. So if you were like me, who were who was in like Wilmington at the time, and at the time Wilmington wasn't a big city, you didn't know anything about the Turbo Graphics, unless you were like in Raleigh or something like that. So it was one like I don't uh, from my friend down the street got one, and I, the putt putt you know had him up there to play. So I guess for around here, you know, it was kind of semi big, you know, and it and it seemed like a big system, you know, for about a year, and then just kind of went away but it was one over in japan you know if we'd got the games that japan got oh yeah probably would have had a, a little bit of a better chance you know but it jumped into the the cd era 
And, you know, with a few systems, that uh, NEC jumping up into it, you had Sega a little bit. You know, of course, they had their Sega CD. And with another little series that I liked, actually, on both, you know, we had Final Fight on Super NES. We had Streets of Rage on Genesis, which uh, Streets of Rage is going to win by default anyway because it had two players versus the one. But in the end, Final Fight came back even better on the Sega CD. Yeah, and then you had final. <laughs> he had mighty final fight on the NES. Only had one player, which is kind of horrible. That one, uh, mighty final fight was great. That's all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good game. It's just it was just such a shame that a lot of the the NES uh, games didn't have a lot of them didn't have beat 'em ups that had two player co op. They just they they really missed out on that. But you know, final fight was one. It just you know the best version ended up there. And I could see the CD craze, you know, FMV games. I bet a lot of people jumped over when those came out. Because at the time, as bad as they are now, you know, it was they were very exciting. That was that like was, high that tech. Was, yeah, that was the shit back then. Like, I remember going into Hills, uh, that old department store, and seeing, you know, advertisements for, you know, Corpse Killer and Street Shark. Or, or uh, Sewer Shark. <laughs> you know, Street Shark's completely different. But seeing Sewer Shark and just being like, wow, this is like, it's like playing a movie. That was the thing. I was like, man, it's like I'm playing a movie. This is awesome. And you would like think of other stuff that they would come out with in the future. Yeah, it's just a a, a craze that lasted, you know, a pretty short time. And a lot of us enjoy going back as bad as they are just be, because they are. But, you know, I think we do down at heart. We remember you know how exciting that was at the time uh the the cd generation was was pretty cool you had the sega cd i never had one of those a a turbo graphics cd uh everybody jumped up and then you know playstation and saturn was some of the next ones uh i didn't really know anything about the saturn uh it was really kind of low-key i mean i probably read a little bit about it here and there but PlayStation, for me, one of the big draws for it was Tekken. Yes. I love Tekken, and when I got the PlayStation, I got it and Tekken. And that was it, and an extra controller <laughs> and a memory card. But <laughs> only one game. Yeah, and I, I remember, like, uh, freaking Tekken was just so, so ahead of its time. Because, I mean, Virtual Fighter looked good on the Saturn, but... Tekken just looks so much better, and it had it had so much more modes to it, and it the sound of it was just so much better. It was more combos. It it just felt like they took everything from Virtual Fighter and made it ten times better. And I remember, I remember, of course, back then I always compared consoles to arcade ports. You know, I remember I went to a a, a restaurant and they had a Tekken cabinet. And I was sitting there playing Tekken. and I always played as King because I liked how he did all the wrestling moves. I like seeing that in 3D. So I'd sit there and play with King and stuff and have a lot, a lot of fun. And then when I'd play it on the PlayStation, I'm like, holy crap. This is the this is like playing the arcade. You know? I mean, despite loading times, this is like an arcade port. And that was the thing, man. Like, if a game came out and it would play like the arcade... I was all about it because that's that was my biggest thing when I was a kid. I wanted to play games that felt like the arcade, and that was the point, you know, around that era when so many of them started getting so good. It's like it wasn't really necessary to go to the arcade anymore. So, like, <laughs> what we all wanted as kids pretty much ended up killing arcades, you know. So we're to blame for that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you had you had uh, the disc based games, and of course, N sixty four. You know, they still had the cartridges, but, I mean, they still had a really solid lineup. I thought N64 had a great launch. You know, they had Mario 64, Pilot Wings 64. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, later on they had, you know, uh, Mario Kart, and Star Fox, and, you know, they had a lot of great games that came out the first year the N64 came out. And But I, I remember being a kid and trying to trying to decide what next console I wanted because I had the I had the at the time I had the NES, Super NES and Genesis and I'm like, all right, I want to get a new console. I was trying to I was originally going to get the Saturn because that was the first really? console. Yeah, because that was the first console I played. I played at Sears and I played Mortal Kombat three, 
course, that felt like the arcade, and I was like, I want a Saturn. But then I played uh, the N64, and, you know, being a Nintendo fan, that kind of lured me. But playing that PlayStation, playing that little compilation desk at Hills, I was like, man, this is this is awesome. You know, playing Crash Bandicoot. You know, Crash Bandicoot was just so different at the time. And, um, you know, Resident Evil and stuff like that. I was like, all right, I, I need to get a PlayStation. Yeah, and this was at the time. You know, like I said, I really knew so little about the Saturn that games I fought for the longest time that were exclusive, like Resident Evil, like Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. You know, there were games that came out on the Saturn. And I guess that's just kind of like how little it was really, you know, known about the fact that I didn't know. So, you know, looking back now, I mean, you had your games, your Guardian Heroes. Uh, I was a big fan of Fighting Vipers. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know why. It's just, uh, it's, it's really kind of silly. But I like that, you know. And once again, in Japan, if Saturn had got a lot of the games that Japan got, there was just so much more that we didn't even know about. So, you know, there really, to me, there was like a war going on with the two systems, but I, I didn't really acknowledge it just because of the Saturn. You know, it was really kind of non-existent to me. The 64 had came out in the air, like you said, too. And, you know, it still, it still had those guys. It still had Mario. It still had Link. And people are always going to be attracted to those. And they, they had such a, a big name at that time. And they totally killed it with the wrestling games, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the wrestling games on N64, bar, bar none, are so much better. Um, do you think, do you think James, that, you know, exclusives and launch titles, do you think they still have a very important uh, place with consumers when it comes to consoles? Like, you know, do you think the NX and, you know, whenever we get new PlayStation consoles or a new Xbox or whatever comes out, you think the launch titles and exclusives really, really help make that decision? I mean, I, I think they can. And I, I can only go by, like, for me. You know, I'll yeah, go back course. to it. I know, you know, Yakuza, of course, uh, led me over there. But having those, you know, exclusives, you look at it, you know, whether it's, you know, of course you get used to your Halos, things like that are always going to be on there. Mario is always going to be on the other. But it's more of the, the other third-party titles you can pick up. And I think, too, if you have enough, you know, whereas, too, the consumer might want them all on one system. You know, we'd like to be able to play everything we have on that one. Uh, as far as for the companies, it's good for them because if you have enough good exclusive, if you can manage to get those, you could really entice people to have both of your systems. Yeah. It just having enough there. I thought the, you know, Tomb Raider, that, that was one. And I thought it was really cool. It still came out on uh, the 360 as well. Uh, I don't know how many people that drew to it. I mean, I thought it was a really amazing game. Uh, Street Fighter is such a big title. You know, just thinking of arcade games we grew up with. Uh, one of the standards in fighting games. And it's, isn't it PS uh, PS only? Yeah, PS PS4 and PC only. It's on PC yeah. as well, yeah, but yeah. That, that, that was a title that made me say, okay, I need to get a PS4. Because, I mean, like, I remember when... You know, we got the Wii U. You know, I got the Wii U, and I was like, "All right, I need to get a PS4 and Xbox One." And you know, last console generation, I was really into the 360. I thought 360 was just such a powerhouse. So I was looking at the Xbox One, and there wasn't a whole lot of stuff coming out for Xbox One that enticed me as much as the PS4. You had, you know, Street Fighter Five was around the horizon at the time. Of course, it got canceled, but you had, you know, PT. And, you know, you had a lot of RPGs and, and stuff like that. It was in very niche Japanese titles coming out for the PS4. And I'm like, all right, this is kind of what I want to do. And that's the thing. Like, I I know a lot of people, they don't like exclusives anymore. Like, a lot of people get kind of get kind of pissed that, you know, a game comes out for one console that's not coming out for the other. But to me, I don't mind it because that helps me make purchase decisions. You know, that may, that makes me be like, you know what, I definitely want to get that because I can play this. Plus, like, what's the point? If all these systems could all have the same games, what's the point of There'd be all no the competition. machines? Yeah. yeah. There'd be no competition. And, of course, you know, the same people that are getting mad that, you know, a game's 
timed exclusive because I mean we don't really have exclusives that much anymore but you have a game that's a time exclusive and you get people that are upset about it they're the same people that were upset that when we were kids and they're like why can't we have Sonic the Hedgehog on Super Nintendo <laughs> yeah I remember I remember hearing stuff like and that and at least you get it I mean it might yeah. be like time delay but it, at least it's there I mean I like to see companies with I mean I would like to want to get both systems. Uh, I think for a while it kind of seemed like you, you know you could play a lot of the same games, you know, like like do I really need both systems? So the more of them I think there are the the better, you know, and maybe people could strive to make better games, you know, so other people jump over. I mean, I, I love seeing that. You look at the like Eco Shadow of Colossus. I mean, how many people have been waiting for uh the next one, what's yeah, it called? Yeah, the Last Guardian. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, yeah, that's one people have been waiting for for a long time, and, and they stayed on there. That that's a big exclusive. The God of War. Yeah, I uh, mean, any, uh, anything about Naughty Dog is going to be on Sony, and that's going to make people jump ship. You know, people are going to be like, "Oh man, I want to play this new Uncharted." I think of the Uncharted series. Yeah, and then we had the uh, what's the one Killer Instinct. That oh, was yeah. another one. Rare, of course, being over with uh, Microsoft. I love the fact that, you know, with their compilation disc, they came out. Uh, I love seeing that. And, you know, the fact that Nintendo for the longest time was just kind of doing something different, you know, like with the Wii, that was uh, another system worth having, like, especially if you got something that kind of stands out that you know almost all the games on it are going to be like a different version. Uh, it might not be one you like as good, you know, it's a standard console, but everything's still going to be different and at the end of it like that's what we need we, we need different things from each one you know we want them all to provide something unique so that you know most people kind of don't want to spend the money on all three consoles but like i said like me they'd probably like to they'd like a reason to have them all yeah just to be able to play all these different kind of games so you know it's something that that we really need and they really need to strive more it kind of seems like it's popping up more and more now and I, i'm really glad we're seeing it yeah and speaking of rare i still i still keep saying if xbox one comes out with an exclusive brand new version of battle toads like a brand new battle toads or um yeah i think battle toads because i was about to say killer instinct but they already made another killer instinct but if they came out with another Battletoads, that would make me want to get an Xbox One. I almost want to get an Xbox One just for their version of Shovel Knight, because their version of Shovel Knight had Battletoads in it. I'm like, that's so awesome. Oh, yeah. Dude. See, that that's one thing, too. Uh, unique things. Soul Calibur, going back oh, again yeah, for a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember, you, you had the Star Wars characters on one. You had Link on one. Uh you had a uh, what's Kratos. His, and you had uh what's his name from Tekken, uh the guy that looks like Doctor Wiley with the Heiachi. hair. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a buff Doctor Wiley every time I see him. <laughs> yeah, the past couple versions of it, you know, they'd have different characters. I I love seeing that, uh, and that's one too. You know, if the games are going to come out on the same systems, have something extra. I mean, you never know who you could draw over. You know, just from little things like that. Sometimes. Well, Sh Shovel Knight's a great example because Shovel Knight. You know, on the Wii U version, to me, the Wii U version is like the definitive version of Shovel Knight because you have the the Shovel Knight Amiibo, so you have two-player co-op, uh, local co-op, and couch co-op with the Amiibo. Yeah, that was and, crazy when I saw that. I'm like, wow, this makes this two players? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that. And then, of course, on the PS4 version, you have a level that you actually battle Kratos from God of War. And on the Xbox One version, you have a, a, a mission with the Battletoads. So it was like little little things like that that really helped consumers be like, oh, this attracts me a little bit more. I'm going to go after that, you know? Yeah, it's, it's more valuable, I think, than people think. It, it can be an annoyance to the players, like we said, but at the end of it, I, th I think it's good, you know? It, it's really great to have. Definitely, definitely. Now, uh I'm looking at the time right now. You think you want to we want to wrap things up and get into games we've been playing recently? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to that uh, conversation before we get uh, into that? No, I think that was a good finisher. You know, just like I said, it's I, I like to see it. It's popping up a bit more, and I I just wanted to keep going. You know. Exactly. I always remember, guys. More competition, more competitiveness uh, with consoles and companies is a good thing for us. It's just it, like wrestling. Yeah, it gives. Yeah, think about you know, think about wrestling. You know, 
when people talk about wrestling and they're like, man, I really wish wrestling would go back the way it was. What do they always talk about? They talk about the years of WCW and WWF and ECW wars. That's what they talk about. They, they want that back. And the reason why they want it back is because there was more variety. There was more to choose from, you know, and that's kind of what we want with consoles, you know. As much as it is a great thing to think of having just one console to play everything and to play all your friends with, that's really, really cool. In the end, if it's bad, there's no other way to look at it. You're stuck with that one console. Or this one, you can go in different directions, kind of like with wrestling. You know, you didn't like what was going on with WCW. You'd flip the channel and see Stone Cold doing something in Vince McMahon. You know? Sounds it. it. Competition makes people try harder. Exactly. Now, uh, I'm going to head it over to you, James. Uh, what have you been playing recently? Uh, I've kind of been on a little bit of a, a 360 kick. I've, I've bought quite a few cheap games in the past days. That's always fun to go do, you know, just spend like five bucks a game. Uh I said I kind of ran out of room on my PS3. I kind of forget I have a 360 sometimes. So I've uh, been going out and getting a couple. I, I picked up a, a DMC, that, that last Devil May Cry that came out, the reboot. Oh, yeah. Um, it just, I don't know, it was five bucks. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try this out. I never played it. And, you know, I really, really liked it. Uh, kind of only really liked Devil May Cry 1. Uh, didn't play 4. I remember two a little bit and three I heard was really great, but I didn't really care about it. But uh, this one, ah, man, it's just like the combos on it are just crazy. I, I get lost, but I always pull off something that's pretty cool. Lots of weapons, these different little hook things. Uh, it's not that long. You know, if you sit down and play, you can just beat it in a couple days. But for five bucks, uh, I, I think it's amazing. You know, uh, I'd got Dragon's Dogma. Another uh, little bit, you know, kind of older game I'd heard good things about. Uh, I'd played a demo, and it was okay. Uh, game seems really good. You know, it seems like there's a lot to do. Lots of little missions, little, little skyrim -y. It, it might be a bit too much for me to take. Uh, we were talking about Saints Row on the last show, and I decided to pick up Saints Row 4, since I had not played that one either. And, uh, man, it just starts off pretty crazy. Aliens, uh... It glitched out on me at first, like my character was invisible. I thought it was part of the game for a little bit, and then it kind of got hard to play. So uh, I restarted it, and uh, that one's been pretty fun. And then I just picked up uh, Metal Gear Rising, because the back said, you know, it was more action-oriented. I think you told me about it before, too. Yeah, it's very hack and slash. And I, I'm not too into stealth, so I, I thought I'd give that a shot. Another five bucks, uh... Rise of the Argonauts. I'm a huge Jason and the Argonauts fan, and uh, I've heard this game is pretty awful, but uh, it was like two bucks, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, hadn't tried it out yet, but uh, uh, yeah, maybe it would be kind of fun. And, and the last one, which is it's a pretty funny one, it's Deadliest Warrior. Uh, it was based on a show on the History Channel. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> It's uh man, it's kind of one of those like so bad it's good. It's uh, like it's like Viking versus the samurai, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, ninjas and everything. I was using the samurai man. You can chop off arms and like they'll keep fighting. Uh, you can lob off a head and and then they die. <laughs> it, it's got a little bit of like a, a bushido blade tinge to it because I mean you can end matches like really quick. Uh, there's not really like a one hit kill, but you can get it pretty close. Uh, it's just pretty silly. It was a download game. Put it on disc. They give you part one and part two. Uh, part two actually has like a, a Vlad the Impaler and Attila the Hun and, uh, and actual people from history on there. Whereas the first one is just you know the ninjas, Vikings, and such. Uh, it's very silly, but uh, it, I mean I kind of had a blast playing it. I think it'd be really fun uh, co-op too. So uh, if you're looking for a good technical fighting game. This is not it, but, you know, if you want to cut off some heads, then i definitely say check it out. And that's about the most of it. You know, i just kind of been buying some cheap 360 games to hold me off uh, until I end up getting my PS4. And it's, uh, it's definitely fun. You know, anytime you can go out, spend 20 bucks and get, you know, four or five games. Uh, and that's always good. It's always worth it and a good way to check out a lot of stuff you missed because so many games, seems like it just came out a year or so ago. They're so cheap now, so it's just really fun, you know, to go back and check it out. And maybe, you know, find some more exclusives that were only on 360 that I missed out on, too. 
Definitely. Now, what I've been playing lately is um, I've been playing a lot of fan-made games. Um, I've been on a big fan-made kick lately. I've been playing uh, Mega Man Unlimited, which is like an NES Mega Man game. And uh, honestly, like a lot of the ones I want to mention, so I'm not just saying this with every single game, a lot of these games are made so well by the fans that if you were to tell me this was an official title, I would actually believe it. I mean, Mega Man Unlimited feels like a Capcom game. It feels like Mega Man 11. I've been playing that. Um, I did play the the whole Metroid 2 remake. The, oh, you did? Yeah, I, I, I got a copy of that. I downloaded it. And it was great. It was fun. I mean, not getting to the whole controversy of why it was taken down, but it can still be found online, by the way, guys. It's not completely taken down. It's still on the internet. No, I, but, was a, uh, I was a big fan of the original. Uh, I had it when it came out. And, I mean, loved it. it. It's very confusing. I don't have the patience play it now so i imagine this version has uh definitely made some corrections to some of the more pain yeah. in the ass parts yeah and i mean it was just made really well you could tell the passion it was it was a great metroid game it played it played a lot like and it looked a lot like zero mission off the game boy advance yeah it was a lot like that um i played that i played uh sonic before the sequel which is um an original fan-made sonic title that plays like a Genesis Sonic game and it looks like it. it even has an original soundtrack and everything uh played that and um I, I did play some actual like game games uh I played some I've been playing some Wii titles uh because I went to my friend Devin I went to his house and uh you know uh his roommate Jamie a really close friend of mine she's got uh, the the Wii and it's modded and it's got a bunch of um you know Wii games already on it. So I was playing Tatsunoku versus Capcom. I was playing stuff like nice. that. I was playing uh let's see, I was playing the the Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. I played that and honestly it wasn't as fun to me because I was expecting uh House of the Dead Overkill. <laughs> You know, yeah. I was expecting that, and I was like, "Man, this game's very it was very slow compared to Overkill. Like Overkill, yeah, is so much of a better game. It's a little bit less of just your standard light shooter. It's a little bit more control to your character. Yeah, uh, it, it's and the bosses are like super hard. Uh, so it's a little different than your standard light gun game. But I, I still think they're pretty cool. But I could see if you go and expecting one thing and get the other, it being kind of a letdown. Yeah, and then and then I played. Um, Mario Galaxy 2, I'd never played that before, actually, and I, I played it the first time the other night, and I love Mario Galaxy 1, and I really liked Mario Galaxy 2, I played a little bit of it, and, uh, because we've been having, like, these, like, weekend get-togethers, where we have, like, these big game nights where, you know, everyone in the kitchen is playing, like, Magic the Gathering, and then we have one room that has, like, a TV with a bunch of consoles, and everyone's playing, like, Smash Brothers, and you got another room where everyone's playing, like, Mario Kart and stuff like that, and we all order pizza and beer and all that shit. It's been a lot of fun. Been great, great weekends for sure. But, uh, that, that's about it for me. I mean, with games, um, again, with that PS4 flash sale that's going on, that Sony flash sale, and we buying some games after the show. I'm planning on getting, you know, Dark Cloud 2 because I had still had never played that. Love Dark Cloud 1, but by the time I got a PS2 again and decide I want to get Dark Cloud 2, it was expensive as hell. Did it go? Is that that one? Is it kind of like cell shaded graphics? Yeah, on yeah. It? it it's still kind of pricey for me. So seeing it for 5.99 digitally, I'll play it in a heartbeat. I, uh, I like that look. It, it, me too. I, I never thought it really got, you had a little trend of it for a bit, but I never thought it got like too played out. And th nah. those kind of graphics always seem to kind of hold up a little bit better than others, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They 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 uh, they uh date really well. They don't look too uh, washed out after I mean, a that years. one game, uh, 13, uh, that's one of my favorite first person shooter games. And, uh, it, it's totally got that, uh, cell shaded look to it. I love it. So I can always go back to it and still, it just, they look fun. I think that's what it is. Just makes things look fun. Exactly. But I mean, that's about it. And of course, if you guys want to hear more about fan made games, I did make a recent video on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash Xander Scullion. In case you guys aren't listening to podcasts on the YouTube channel, you can check out more content on that uh, 
on that link. Also, um, if you're listening to us on YouTube, uh, be sure to check us out on Podomatic.com or on iTunes for more convenience of listening to the show. Now, I did like a little survey uh, the other day on Facebook just asking, you know, where where do you guys listen to the podcast? And I had a lot of people say Podomatic, a lot of people say YouTube. Uh, I was basically doing that kind of measuring when to upload the episodes on what platform first, you know, because I'm not going to change any of the platforms, but, you know, I remember when I was having a little bit of issues with Podomatic and a couple of episodes weren't on there, it made me realize how important Podomatic was because I was getting people messaging me being like, hey, you know, I haven't been on Pod, I haven't seen an episode in Podomatic in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, man, we've already had like three or four episodes up. So that is, I know that's active, so I'm not going to be changing our lineup, but, you know, it's probably going to go up on Podomatic first and then a couple of days later go up on YouTube. So be sure to check it out, guys. If you, if you want to listen to the episode sooner, check it out on Podomatic. And then YouTube is going to be on its own little playlist. But I think this is going to conclude in another episode. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, guys, as always, thanks for listening. And as always, happy gaming. Have a pleasant evening, everybody. Can't get enough of Access Gaming Podcast? Be sure to check out our audio podcast on podomatic.com. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes. And if you have a YouTube channel or podcast you'd like to share, be sure to check us out on Facebook on our group page and join the community. As always, guys, thank you so much for all the support and happy gaming.